Delighted to be joined now by Nigel Nelson, the political editor of the Sunday Mirror and the Sunday People, the longest serving political editor in the lobby, if I'm not mistaken. Indeed, this is uh, my 37th year of coming to conference. 37th conference, my gosh. So first of all, of all of these 37 years of conferences, how does this compare? Uh, probably the most chaotic uh, and the most messy, the most difficult. Uh, never seen a new leader come in and get such a bad time when she's got here. The only extra thing that could go wrong now would be if she got a very bad cough and bits of the stage started falling off. <laughs> well, that uh, harks us back to 2018, was it, when Theresa May not, right. only, not only got a bad cough, bits of the stage fell off and someone went up with a P45 to offer. I suppose, <laughs> I suppose that is such a low bar. Surely, surely Liz Truss will, uh, will, will surpass that. But, but what does she need to do in this speech? How does she need to bring this party together? Well, she needs a miracle, first of all. Um, and the P45 is still metaphorically out there because you've got so many MPs who are against her. And they're actively talking. Those who've turned up to conference, an awful lot of them haven't, um, the ones who are here are actively talking about how they might get rid of her. Now, of course, that's a much more difficult process. She can't be challenged for uh, another year under the current rules. But they're now working out how to change the rules. I mean, they're very angry. That they're in despair. They feel they're heading for a general election defeat. And they also think they got the wrong leader. So it's just a question now of how they, how they frame that. Now, she can save herself. Um, there are things she can do. She could announce today, having, got, having you turned on the 45p, she could announce that I will um, uh, uprate benefits in line with inflation. That would get rid of another rebellion because the, the MPs are talking about rebelling against that. They'll certainly let the mini-budget go through now, but that's the next stage. She could also make sure that the Office of Budget Responsibility report actually says something good about the Chancellor's mid-term um, statement, which is coming up within a couple of weeks. Um, so all those things, that there are, there are ways out of it, but it does mean that she has to use up an awful lot of political capital to actually get there. It's extraordinary that this has been such a rapid premiership. But Liz Truss has only been in post for about three weeks, but it feels like it's been perhaps three years, the amount of yes. uh, uh, news that has happened, the amount of policy that has been put forward, the seismic events that have taken place. Um, I, I wonder, given the, 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 the old adage that a week's a long time in politics... Is everyone at this conference thinking perhaps too short term that, that potentially where this party is in the polls now might be a very, very different place, not only six months from now, but four times that, two years away from the next general election. Well, if, if a week's a long time in politics, then uh, two years is several centuries. So, of course, an awful lot can happen in that time. Keir Starmer may implode himself. You, do, you don't know. Um, so the longer that she can go, I mean, I thought that she might use her bounce for um, uh, a spring election. That's way off the cards now. There's mm. no way of doing that. She's going to have to go long, which means that she's got until January 2025, the last possible date for the next election. So so there is time for her to turn things round. But at the moment, it's a question of actually how she gets, her, gets the confidence of both um, the MPs and also the markets back. Those are the two key things she must do. Now, there's no sign of her doing that, but she seems to stick to her guns, uh, guns um, with her general economic policy, save the 45p, which they now seem to be saying, oh, terribly minor, didn't matter, we just, you know, just got rid of that. Um, but certainly, I think think that the benefit up rating is now a key issue and ideally today would be the day to address it. It's interesting looking at what we're expecting when Parliament returns a week from now, when we're looking at uh, perhaps I don't know, four or five weeks before Christmas where Parliament actually has time to get business done. It hasn't had much time to sit at all in the last uh, few months. But there is an ambitious agenda that Liz Truss has hinted at of supply-side reform, of reform to migration, to planning, to childcare, to all of these issues. Given that Liz Truss has felt forced to retreat, to U-turn on the 45p rate of tax, what hope does she have for some of these really contentious elements 
of supply-side reform? Well, it's the same problem. That the, the whole thing that she needs to get back is the confidence of, of MPs. Now, if MPs are actually actively talking about uh, bringing her down one way or another, even if it causes a general election, you can see how serious the whole thing is. So the first thing is to actually calm them mm. and also to make sure that the markets stay stable as well. So the pound is at least recovered. Mm. Um, the markets aren't quite so frenetic as they were a week ago. All those things would actually help her. But most importantly, it's her own troops. That Bear in mind, only a third of them ever voted for her. Probably out of those third, 50-odd um, were hardcore supporters and 50-odd wanted jobs. So at the moment, there is actually a realistic chance of MPs finding a way of bringing their preferred choice back, which is, of course, Rishi Sunak. But Rishi Sunak did not get a majority of Conservative MPs. In, in many ways, the leadership election uh, was, was peculiar in that there was no standout. Well, I, when it came to the parliamentary side of it, obviously, um, the view always was that if Liz Truss made the final two, mm. the membership would vote for her. So Rishi Sunak got 137 MPs backing him who were probably, you know, real supporters. They weren't necessarily after jobs or whatever. They were genuine supporters. Mm. Liz Truss got 113. So she came behind Rishi Sunak and Penny Morden got over 100 votes. Yes. So that shows that shows the, um, the split within the party about their preferred candidate. Those 100 votes for Penny Morden seems to have empowered her to come out and be critical already mm. as a cabinet minister of Liz, Liz Truss's policies. Uh, she doesn't like the idea of benefits not being uprated in line with inflation. So not only have you got, got rebellion on the back benches, you've also got rebellions going on um, within the cabinet. Mm. So there are a lot of people out there to calm down. 